Hello, my name is Kain Sandu Janius, and today we are going to be discussing dimensionality reduction and principal component analysis. Actually, we are going to look at the theories and then we actually demonstrate how this uh, concept works. Now, I want to remind you to subscribe so that at least I can make better videos. And secondly, my videos are based on requests by subscribers so if you have a request of a particular topic you want to learn you can just tell me and I make the video for you so just subscribe and additionally maybe if you subscribe I can have a higher rating on my channel on my videos so having done that let's now look at this very clear explanation of dimensionality reduction and principal components analysis all right, what are we going to cover in this lesson? In this about 10 to 15 minutes lesson, we are going to cover the problems with high dimensional data. What actually is dimensionality reduction? We are, we are going to look at two types of dimensionality reduction. Then what is principal component analysis? Uh, we examine methods of dimensionality reduction, how principal component analysis work, then in the next four steps, we are going to actually demonstrate uh, the working of principal component analysis. We are going to go through these four steps and then at the end, we are going to have uh, principal components explaining our data. And then we summarize everything we've gone through. So let's go ahead to the first part. Now, what is the problem? Let's assume that we have two-dimensional data and we plot this two-dimensional data in a graph. We will be able to visualize this data very easily. So we can see that in this case we have this as the oldest because we are plotting the names against the age or the age against the names and it's easy for us to see the youngest is Kela. Okay, the oldest is Jadon and we have some other uh, names in between. So this is very clear. Data in two dimension is not really a problem. Let's look at data in three dimension. In this case, we have a third column has been added to our data, and that column is class. So we are going to plot this data now in three dimension. I try to use Microsoft Excel to create this plot. Now you can see that. At least we have uh, this Jadon going high, okay? But you see that it's not also very clear uh, to explain the three data sets, as you can see. So this is data in three dimensions, which doesn't seem to make more sense as data in two dimensions. So that is where our problems start uh, coming. Although we can explain this data but not as clear as in two dimension. Let's now take a look at the next one, data in four dimensions, okay? Now, this is the problem. I've added another row, sorry, another column to the table, and that is scores. Now, if we look at this data, now it doesn't make much sense because although we can see the names, but we not actually see the effects of the age, the class, and score, on this data. So that means that the, the higher the dimension of the data goes, the more complex the visualization becomes and the more difficult it is for us to visualize and understand the data. That means that data is better explained and visualized in maybe three dimensions or less. So that is the problem of principal components analysis. It tries to solve the problem of high dimensional data. Now, to summarize the problems with high dimensional data, we have the first one is that training a model with high dimensional data requires so much time and space complexity, leads to overfitting, unable to capture new data points. Not all the features of the data are relevant to the problems being solved, and data in lower dimensions have lower noise on necessary parts of the data. So, it's better to handle data in lower dimensions than data in higher dimensions. All right, let's now look at two types of dimensionality reduction. The first one is feature extraction. 
It means in our data set we are trying to find new features. The second one is feature selection, meaning that we are trying to extract the most relevant features of the data set. Alright, so now this next part that says methods of dimensionality reduction, BCA, multidimensional scaling, factor analysis and independent component analysis. I'm not going to explain them, I just added it here so that you can use it to improve on your knowledge of principal component analysis and dimensionality reduction. So pause the video and take a look at them. Maybe pick up a textbook and get a clearer understanding on them. Alright, so what is principal component analysis? Because this is our purpose for today's class. PCA is a variance maximizing technique that projects the original data onto a direction that maximizes variance. So PCA tends to determine the features of the data that maximizes or that has the most effects on the data set. It performs a linear mapping of original data to a lower dimensional space so that the variance of the data in the lower dimensional space representation is maximized. Alright, let's now see how really does PCA work in theory. We are going to look at the theory and then we take a demonstration. Now this is the theory of PCA. PCA is performed by carrying out an eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix. Now what it means is if you have your original data in several dimensions you have to decompose this data by a method called eigen decomposition. Before you perform the eigen decomposition, you have to obtain the covariance matrix of your original data. When eigen decomposition is performed, the result will be a set of eigen vectors and a set of eigen values. This eigen vector eigen value pairs can now be used to explain our data. All right, so let's now demonstrate principal components analysis and see how it actually works. Assuming this is our original data set made up of N observations and M features. Okay, so it's made up of N observations and M features, meaning that the original data set gives us a matrix of M by N, of dimension M, N by M, meaning N observations or n samples and m features. Now we need to perform the eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix of this data. The eigen decomposition is performed this way. We have xt representing the covariance matrix and then we have x representing the, the original matrix. Sorry, I think, okay, good. So when we do this, we, we obtain an M by N matrix, an M by M matrix, that is a square matrix whose size depends on the number of measurements, okay? All right, so that is the first step. We obtain the covariance matrix by multiplying the transpose of the original matrix to the same matrix, and that gives us the co. Uh, the covariance matrix. The eigen decomposition gives us a set of eigen vectors and a set of eigen values. Okay, so now when you perform this decomposition, you have a set of eigen vectors and a set of eigen values. So this is called an eigen pair. Okay, so so this is called an eigen pair or a set of eigen pairs. That is what we are going to obtain in the step two. So now in step three, you obtain the loadings. Now, what are the loadings? Loadings are obtained by taking the original matrix. I'm multiplying it by W. 
that will give us a matrix T. Now we have T is equal to X W. Remember W is obtained when we carried out eigen decomposition of the original matrix, we obtained a matrix W. Now to obtain the loadings, we obtain a matrix T, which is the original matrix times the matrix we obtained after the decomposition and that gives us a matrix like this okay so the columns of w are called the loadings which is the eigenvectors from the original matrix so and the columns of t is called the scores so when you decompose the original matrix you obtain the the eigenpair of eigenvectors and eigenvalues the eigenvector which is this has columns and the columns are actually called loadings all right we'll see how important these loadings are because the columns in the loadings or these loadings are ordered in decreasing order of the eigenvalues meaning that the first column have a higher value than the second one followed by the second one followed by the next one and so on so basically our data can be explained using the first few loadings or the first few columns of this matrix all right so now the fourth and final stage of this demonstration is to extract the principal component how do we do that when you have the loadings and as we mentioned they are ordered meaning that the first one has the highest value or the highest eigenvalue the second one has the next and it continues to decrease meaning that we can actually take the first arrow columns of this uh, matrix and use it to describe our data okay so if we want we can just for our uh, dimension, we take the first R loadings. So if we want to describe our data using two principal components, we can actually make R to be equal to 2, and then we obtain a matrix for R equal to 2. So how we obtain it is we simply multiply the original matrix by this truncated matrix that takes just the first R loadings, or the first R columns, of this matrix of this course matrix all right so this is how principal component analysis is performed remember the, the steps decompose the covariance matrix obtain a set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors called the eigenpair then you obtain the loadings and then extract the principal components so this is the much we can take now let's summarize what we've done so far dimensionality reduction reduces data in high dimension to lower dimension by obtaining principal components PCA is performed by constructing a covariance matrix performing an eigen decomposition of the matrix to obtain the set of eigenvectors columns of the W are ordered by size of their corresponding eigenvalues Choose the first n columns of W and use it to describe your data. So this is how we come to the end. I would like to thank you for watching and I would also like to thank you for being there. Subscribe to the channel if you've not done so, so that I could make better videos for you. If you have any question or observation or some other topic in AI and machine learning that you want me to discuss, Leave it there in the comment box below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Share with some of your friends. Maybe it can help someone pass his exam or interview. I remain kind to the genius and I'd like to thank you for viewing.